In today's quick video, we're going to learn about lazy sequences in Swift, how you can use them and why they're super practical. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below for the YouTube algorithm, open up Xcode, and let's dive right in. We're going to work in a playground since it's a pretty simple topic and playgrounds are more than sufficient to learn about it. Let's pick a blank template here and we'll call this a lazy day. And I'll toss it onto my desktop and let's talk about lazy sequences. So first and foremost, sequences, the underlying data type for arrays, collections. Collection is actually another data type in Swift. So let's start by creating a array. So I'll have a array here. Let's say uh, var array is going to be an array repeating numbers from let's do zero uh, through 100 thousand inclusive this will basically give us a array of zero to a hundred thousand nothing too glamorous going on here so let's say i wanted to multiply each of these numbers by three so let's say this is let times three array is going to be array dot map and i can say dollar zero aka the number each uh, contextual capture list parameter times three Right, this makes sense. We basically are looping over all the numbers in this array up here, and we're saying uh, map it and do that number times three. Sometimes this is exactly what you wanna do. You actually want to process every single one of these numbers, but other times what you really wanna do is you wanna have a functional way to declare like, hey, if I want, let's say number uh, three uh, from this array, I wanna get the number three multiplied by three, AKA nine. And the benefit of doing that is instead of doing this times three operation on every single number in this collection, in this array, which is quite heavy because it's quite large, what Swift is actually going to do under the hood is it'll capture a closure, which has this operation represented in it. And then whenever you access a uh, element from that lazy sequence, it'll, you know, just in time opportunistically perform that operation for you. So let's actually see that in practice, right? So if I do this, let's print out. So I'm going to print out times three array, and we're going to print out the thing at, let's see, zero, one, two, three at the fourth index. I'm also gonna do that for the standard array. Let's give this a quick run in our console down here by hitting that play button. And we expect to see three and uh, nine, or four and 12, I guess it's uh, index three. Let me fix that there. We expect to see three and nine respectively. All right, looking cool. Now let's do a lazy variant of this. I'm gonna copy and paste it just so we can exemplify this. And the only thing you need to actually do is you can prepend lazy on to uh, the collection, the sequence, prior to doing the map. And it'll actually tell you, this is a lazy sequence. It infers the type of the collection since lazy sequence is generic. It's a collection, an array of integers. It's a sequence containing the same element as its sequence, but in which the sum operations such as a map filter are implemented lazily. So it does a pretty good job explaining it for you as well. And let's do this as well. So in this case, we'll do lazy. All right, let's give this a stop and a run once more, and we still expect to see nine. The difference is if you actually were to profile this, the amount of both memory and CPU that this line will use far exceeds what line number six will use. And it's pretty self-explanatory as to why. This is something that's, I would say, a little lesser known. I haven't actually seen a lot of people using this, and it's one of those things that actually could help you in uh, interviews as well. You just need to call out that this lazy thing is doing a lot of the work for you, but it is quite a important optimization, and this is actually used a lot by Apple under the hood, uh, particularly in SwiftUI. So in SwiftUI, where you have view modifiers that are applied and the actual uh, opaque view protocol type is basically diffed to figure out what things to update on the screen. Apple does a lot of that in a lazy fashion and lazy does actually get used quite a bit. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Let me know in the comments if you've used lazy sequences before, if you have, what you've used them for, any other lazy operation flavors that you think are cool. Let me know if you have any video suggestions on our way to 90k subs to so subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share the channel, really appreciate it. Connect on LinkedIn, follow on Twitter, if you just want to say hello in the comments helps out a lot and i always love interacting with you guys so uh, don't hesitate to do so thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one